how long have we been waiting for RC four wheel drive to come out with something completely new? It's been a while, right guys? Well, they finally did it. It's here in the workshop, it's scale, it's ready to run, and it's different. You can't miss this. It's not 18 scale. It's not another trail finder. And it's not another Galande two or Jalande or Galande, however you want to call it. And here it is, the Miller Motorsports Pro Rock Racer. This might be the most realistic ready to run rock racer we've ever seen. And I know there's not too many of those, but this thing has a shifting two-speed transmission. You could also shift it from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive. You can lock out the axles. It's got limiting straps on the axles, full cage, an incredibly realistic looking engine, and tons of licensing, including the Miller Motorsports licensing. Let's get this thing out of the box. That suspension seems pretty soft, but first up, we've got to check out the body and all the scale details. RC four wheel drive did it up right. They have their reputation of creating very scale vehicles. And in order to do that here, they teamed up with Miller Motorsports, a very well-known rock racer that has a ton of accomplishments and they replicated his rock racer. With all of the sponsor graphics that he has, check out the body work. It looks just like his rig. There's a molded slotted grill up front with a fair lead, headlights, which are transparent. Looks like you go add LED lights later, but I like the red around the bezels. Then there's the hood panel, which is held on with four screws. And I've got one little problem to point out here. Uh, they just didn't give us enough extra plastic around some of these screws. And a piece of my body has already broken off before I've even run this thing. But let's move to the back. They got uh, separate panels on the sides and it's all painted yellow like his rig. Then they've just got these huge decals that have all the sponsors. It does change the color a little bit just because of the clear decal. But I mean, this is just really cool to have that many sponsor graphics on it and then of course there is the roof plate with the Miller Motorsports logo and then I got to show you guys the other side because that is where you access the battery and it took me a while to figure it out but there's two body clips here and you can pull off this panel and slide in your battery pack now take a look at this the fuel cell out back is just absolutely awesome there's lines all over the place shut off valves the fuel filler over here has a red bezel around it fuel tubing down to the fuel cell itself and this actually houses the receiver and servos for the extra functionality. Absolutely love the look of the marker lights out back, the tail lights, and then inside it's got a ton of detail as well. So you've got a, a detailed dashboard, the upper control panel, seats, shifters, floor pedals, steering wheel, and even the little navigation screen in the passenger side, it moves around and twists. The side mirrors can fold over, radiator behind them, and it looks like you actually put radiator fans. But this Rock Racer is just over the top as far as its scale appearance. Now we can talk about the chassis here more appropriately the tube frame. So with some rock racers out there, we've seen an aluminum chassis plate or even a molded chassis plate and then a cage bolted to it. Well, this is a complete cage framework setup. Just like the Miller Motorsports Real Rock Racer, everything is a tube style frame throughout this, you know, from the front bumper all the way up to the cage work. Everything is cage work. And that just shows that RC four wheel drive did it up right. They went for the scale realism in this. The suspension, it looks awesome. It looks very realistic, but I do have a small concern about it, which I'll share with you in just a minute. But we'll start off with the links on it. So it's a four link setup in the front and in the rear. They have a uh, metal links with composite ball ends and metal pivot balls. And then the rear is a trailing arm setup and the shock mounts inside that trailing arm. There's two positions for that. And they also have sway bars on this, both front and rear to help out with the handling. They have limiting straps so you can't overextend the suspension when you're driving hard off road. And now let's talk about the shocks themselves. It's an aluminum body shock. It's a very narrow looking shock, so it looks super scale. It has a dual spring setup, so it's got a light spring up top and a firmer spring uh, as the main spring. There are pistons and O-rings inside, but there is only like a couple drops of oil from the factory, so it seems super light. If you're going flat out with this thing, I think it's going to buck it up a lot. We'll see when we go and drive it. And now the drive line. We've got a lot to talk about here, and we'll start off with the transmission, which looks like a real transmission. Guys, this is absolutely incredible. I could see a lot of people wanting this transmission set up just as a side note for their other builds. So it's got an engine planted in the front of this thing. And inside that engine is the brushless motor system. I'll tell you about that in a minute. On the front of the engine, it's got pulleys and a rubber O-ring for a belt, an alternator. It's got headers and spark plugs. It just has a realistic
fantastic look to it. Such a huge want factor, I bet, for so many people, which makes me actually want to drive this thing without the hood, just so you can see the engine work and detail that they put into it. But the motor goes to a, like a planetary style setup from what I see in the instruction manual, then goes down to the transmission itself. There's a series of gears in there and you could actually shift the transmission from two wheel drive to four wheel drive. They have a two speed transmission setup as well, all shifted by your transmitter. There's servos that are located in back and cables that run to the shifting mechanisms. So you could shift it from low gear to high gear. And it seems like it's got a pretty good span between the gear ratios. Just what I'm seeing here on the workbench. The low gear is a nice slow crawl and that it looks like the high gear is gonna give us some decent speed. From what I can tell, they've got ball bearings. I'm gonna assume that they have metal gears in there. I, get, I couldn't take this whole setup apart, guys. This is like working on a real car. From what I've taken apart, just to show you guys, it was a lot of work. And, and if you do need to make any repairs to this, it's gonna take you some time. But from what I can tell, again, ball bearings, they've got a, a, a transfer case in there, actually, that's where you get your shifting from your two-wheel drive to your four-wheel drive. And then they have steel slider drive shafts uh, down to the rear axle. They have a stubby shaft that goes to a transfer bearing up front, and then the steel drive shaft down to the front axle. Now, the axles themselves look super bulked up, got a really cool shape to them. Uh, you know, they've got the brace up front. They've got a large axle set up in the rear, center-mounted pumpkin in the rear, offset up front. So, I mean, ju it just looks super realistic there's that transfer case i was telling you guys about and then back to the axles i know i'm jumping around but i'm really excited about this rig uh you can see the cable going to the differential case and that shifts the differential inside so you can lock it out or you can open it up so you get better cornering i really like the look of the axles the one thing i did notice though is they don't use locking nuts on these small screws here and i'm hoping that just the pressure fit doesn't allow those nuts to back out but that's just something to keep an eye on in my opinion and then this they've got axle bump stops probably should have talked about that during the chassis but check out the bump stops for the axles that's so cool feels like they've got a spring inside that just helps damp that it looks realistic it actually works it's so cool i can see that the front axle is fitted with steel universals which is pretty cool but what's even cooler is it goes out to a fake brake disc and there's even a brake caliper there which gives it an even more scale look and then the wheels itself is a method of style wheel and it looks like they didn't get the needle licensing for the tire itself they're a JD model tire, which actually looks pretty cool. And it's a soft tire with a foam insert and they're B-locks too. The only downside about these wheels are they've got this really nice center cap on the outside, but there are eight little lock nuts that hold on that cap before you can access the seven millimeter lock nut. And it's kind of a pain if you don't have the right tool to get these wheels off. And the radio system that they chose for it is this Dumbo RC radio, which is a multiple channel radio system. They include their twister servo for for the steering and there's even a metal servo arm and metal steering links i forgot to mention that before the power system on this as i mentioned is a brushless system so they've got the wp 10 bl 60 ready to run speed controller it's a waterproof speed controller and then the motor is a sensorless 3650 1200 kv motor it's got an orange can to it you can kind of see it peeking out of one side of the motor and as i mentioned in the fuel cell is where you're going to find the receiver and then three micro servos that control all those different functions of the car the only thing you're going to need to supply is a 2 or 3S LiPo battery, charger, and a place to run this thing. <laughs> look at this. They give you alternate decals, too, in case you want to change up the look. What do you guys think? Pretty awesome so far, right? Let me know what your favorite feature is in the comments section below while I head out for the drive. Well, guys, this isn't exactly rock racer territory, but I love taking all sorts of RC off-road rigs here for fun, and that's what we're going to do. We're just going to have some fun with the Pro Racer. First up guys, they got the transmission ratio right on this. Low gear is a nice slow crawl, really controlled. And then when you go hit this button on the transmitter, the thing just takes off.
tires are actually nice and soft and they seem to be pretty grippy. So I commented in the studio how there wasn't a lot of oil in the shocks, but I actually really like the way it works. It looks realistic. Although the suspension looks realistic, there's a little bit of a problem with those rear axle bump stops. I'll tell you about it at the end of the video. So the rig actually has plenty of steering. It's just that you have to turn up the dual rate to 100. They had it set at 75 from the factory. So this wound up being a wicked spot to take this rock racer. I've had so much fun with it here and its performance has really exceeded what I was expecting. Guys, I'm pretty impressed with what RC four wheel drive gave us here. Not only is this rig exciting to look at something really new, but it's also exciting to drive and it takes some skill to drive this thing. There's so much functionality to it and it, so many options that once you start getting it down, it becomes so much fun. And in the beginning, it actually is a little bit tough. You wanna throttle this thing and it starts to sway back and forth and rolls over on you. But once you start unlocking the diffs for certain situations or using low, or high and getting the, your rhythm down for wheeling this thing, it becomes so much fun and so realistic as well. I've been driving it ever since I hit the rocks with it for the, for the video portion. And I've got some additional notes I wanna talk to you guys about based on the, the additional driving. And one of them is just really practice the different functions before you go out. Because if you just go right out, you might wind up really thrashing on this thing and you can save yourself some wear and tear if you just get the functionality down, get that muscle memory going with everything. And then I think you're gonna have a lot of fun Fun with it. It's a very capable rig on the rocks, as you guys saw, uh, and out in the dirt, it was a, a learning process actually because of the massive drag brake that this thing has. Uh, you can go and dial it down, and I'd probably say go and dial it down depending on your style. But if you if you let off to correct, this thing just wants a flip forward because of the drag brake, or it gets all sideways, then it rolls over. So practice, practice, practice with it. With that said, I got to talk about a couple of issues that I had with it, and one of them is the rear bump stop dampers and please somebody tell me what the correct term for it is. Basically the dampers here have a little cap on the bottom that just helps protect the shaft from digging into the axle when uh, it's compressed. And those things literally fell off before I even hit the trails with it. They are just press fit on and they're gonna fall off on you. These guys should have really threaded the bottoms and threaded that cap on just to keep it on there. The two nuts that hold it in place backed off on me within the first battery pack. So you guys are gonna have to put some thread lock on those and, and tighten them down. The other thing is the suspension is very soft and when you're in more of a, a high speed situation, there is a lot of chassis roll. And I will say, you know, in low speed situations, the suspension looks so realistic and cool, but there's a lot of guys that are gonna wanna speed with this thing. And I think a little bit heavier of a shock oil will help out. I did throw a GNSS on here here and it does top out at 16 miles an hour. The filter on the fake engine fell off, so this is something you might want to glue, or if you don't glue it, make sure you keep an eye out for it on the trail in case it falls off. And finally, the only thing I'm really worried about so far on this is the locker arm for the uh, that's on the axles here. I mean, it sits low at the bottom and it's looking like it's already getting chewed up in the rear. Would've been nice if they somehow maybe clocked the whole mechanism and that lever was on the top. 
But I would say watch out for that, especially in the rear because you're gonna be ripping through rocks with it and it's probably gotta catch this thing. So that's one other little concern I have, just maybe having a spare on hand in case something does happen. But again, RC four wheel drive did an amazing job with this. I'll have links for it in the video description below. And I know the rock racing community is a little bit smaller right now than it was. It used to be hyped up pretty big, but I think this might actually revive it a little bit. This thing was a lot of fun. Let me know if you think this release will give a kick to the segment in the comment section below.